inside some unidentified institution. A woman aged about 30 to 35, wearing a white jacket and a slightly shimmering beige-gray dress. On bare legs, cream-gray patent pumps on a thick post. In the video, the woman is standing all the time, changing her leg from time to time, on which she rests her entire body weight. Apparently only the right shoe loses contact with the foot, and it does so very often. Changes in the brains of migraine sufferers have been identified. Hope for new therapies. Migraine sufferers have specific brain changes, new research shows. Using ultra-high resolution magnetic resonance imaging. The researchers found that the perivascular spaces in the brain are significantly enlarged in patients who experience both chronic and episodic migraine. These findings could open up new avenues for further research into treatments for this devastating disease. Researchers at the University of Southern California, Los Angeles, have identified enlarged perivascular spaces in the brains of migraine sufferers. Perivascular spaces, also known as virtual robin spaces, are fluid-filled spaces that surround blood vessels in the brain. They are most often located in the area of the basal ganglia, in the white matter, in the thalamus, midbrain, cerebellum, hippocampus and along the visual pathway. Perivascular spaces are affected by several factors, including abnormalities in the blood-brain barrier and inflammation. They can be a sign of many diseases, including dementia or high blood pressure and, according to new research, also play a role in migraines. The only question is whether this mechanism is the effect or the cause of the disease. The scientists' findings, presented at the 108th meeting of the Radiological Society of North America, may represent an as yet unexplored avenue for future research. Perhaps thanks to this, it will be possible to develop effective therapies for migraines. Migraine is a common, often debilitating condition involving severe, recurrent headaches that vary in severity and frequency. Migraines can also cause nausea, weakness, and photophobia. Sometimes there is also excessive sensitivity to sounds and smells. In migraine, there is aura, which is characterized by scotoma. Visual field defects, paresthesias, paresis, or aphasia. According to the American Migraine Foundation, more than 37 million people suffer from migraines in the United States alone. In people with chronic and episodic migraine without the so-called aura, there are significant changes in the perivascular spaces in an area of the brain called the center semioval. These changes have never been reported before, said Wilson Zhu, a doctoral student at the Keck School of Medicine at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles and a co-author of the study. The perivascular spaces are part of the brain's fluid removal system. Studying how they contribute to migraines may help us better understand the complexity of migraine formation, he added. Sue and his colleagues wanted to see if enlarged perivascular spaces had anything to do with migraine. They used ultra-high field magnetic resonance imaging to compare structural microvascular changes in different types of migraine. To our knowledge, this is the first study to use ultra-high resolution MRI to study microvascular changes in the brain caused by migraine, particularly in the perivascular spaces. Because this type of scan is able to produce much higher resolution and better quality images of the brain than other types of MRI, it can be used to show much smaller changes in brain tissue after a migraine, Zhu said. The study involved 10 people with chronic migraine, 10 with episodic migraine without aura, and 5 healthy volunteers as controls. The study participants were between 25 and 60 years old. 
Analysis of MRI scans showed that the number of enlarged perivascular spaces in the center of the semi-oval was significantly greater in migraine patients compared to controls. In addition, enlarged perivascular spaces in the semi-oval center correlated with the severity of white matter arousal in migraine patients. We studied chronic migraine and episodic migraine without aura and found that in both types of migraine, perivascular spaces were larger in the center of the semi-oval, Zhu said. The researchers hypothesized that significant differences in perivascular spaces in migraine patients compared to healthy controls could suggest glymphatic disorders in the brain. The glymphatic system is a brain waste disposal system that uses perivascular channels to eliminate metabolites from the central nervous system. A disorder of the glymphatic system would mean that the brain is unable to clean itself properly leading to a buildup of waste that can be toxic to the brain. However, it is not known whether these changes contribute to the development of migraine or are the result of it. Continuation of research on a larger group and long-term follow-up of patients will allow to better characterize the relationship between structural changes and the development and type of migraine. The results of our study may help inspire future larger-scale studies to determine how changes in the brain's microscopic vessels and blood supply contribute to different types of migraine. Ultimately, this could help us develop new, personalized ways to diagnose and treat migraines, Zhu said. Power supply and control of LED strips. LED strips are one of the easiest ways to make a lighting installation, both if we need to make decorative lighting and work surface lighting, e.g. in a home workshop or kitchen. In order for the lighting on LED strips to work, it is necessary to purchase the appropriate power supply with a built-in control system. Unlike traditional light sources, which include incandescence bulbs, e.g. tungsten, the requirements for the power source for LED lighting are completely different. Although LED lighting has many advantages, mainly due to energy efficiency, lifetime and stable output parameters, it also requires a more advanced power supply that will provide a constant voltage at the output. Filtered out from interference. The stability of the power supply parameters for LEDs is also intended to maintain their constant operating temperature to prevent them from overheating, which could lead to malfunction and, ultimately, damage to the lighting. The main task of the LED driver is to provide electricity to individual LEDs or LED strips. The standard construction of the driver supplies the LEDs with a constant voltage, e.g. 12 volts or 24 volts as a result of transformation from the mains voltage, which has an alternating course. Modern LED power supply systems can operate in a wide range of input voltages, even from 100 volts to 240 volts. Such a driver also has the necessary protections that protect the LEDs against short circuits, electrical and thermal overloads, as well as overvoltages. Although the purpose of using LED power supplies and drivers is to provide the electricity necessary to illuminate them, we distinguish constant voltage and constant current drivers. In most cases, they cannot be used interchangeably and should be selected appropriately for the hardware specificity of the lamp. Typically, constant voltage power supplies provide a constant voltage. LED lamps powered by such a voltage usually have a built-in current stabilizer. On the other hand, constant current power supplies have a built-in stabilization system of the supplied current and are dedicated primarily to lighting that does not have a built-in current stabilizer.
To understand the principle of operation of constant voltage and constant current power supplies, it is necessary to pay attention to how the LEDs are connected in a string. Series and parallel connections are typically used. In a series connection, the connections between the diodes are made between the anode and the cathode. In a parallel connection, the anodes of individual diodes are connected to the anodes, and the cathodes, to the cathodes. In series connection, the same current flows through each diode. When selecting a DC power supply, consider the total voltage drop across all diodes. For example, if each of the LEDs in a 2-0 LED string needs 2 volts to light up, 40V must be supplied. On the other hand, when connected in parallel, LED strings can be combined into matrix systems. This is a very good solution when the power supply has one or more, although not enough, outputs. Then we can connect several LED strings to a single DC voltage output to obtain a uniform lighting effect. Pay attention to the maximum output current efficiency to cover the energy demand of all LED strips. Although the purpose of using LED power supplies and drivers is to provide the electricity necessary to illuminate them, we distinguish constant voltage and constant current drivers. In most cases, they cannot be used interchangeably and should be selected appropriately for the hardware specificity of the lamp. Typically, constant voltage power supplies provide a constant voltage. LED lamps powered by such a voltage usually have a built-in current stabilizer. On the other hand, constant current power supplies have a built-in stabilization system of the supplied current and are dedicated primarily to lighting that does not have a built-in current stabilizer. To understand the principle of operation of constant voltage and constant current power supplies, it is necessary to pay attention to how the LEDs are connected in a string. Series and parallel connections are typically used. In a series connection, the connections between the diodes are made between the anode and the cathode. In a parallel connection, the anodes of individual diodes are connected to the anodes, and the cathodes, to the cathodes. In series connection, the same current flows through each diode. When selecting a DC power supply, consider the total voltage drop across all diodes. For example, if each of the LEDs in a 2-0 LED string needs 2 volts to light up, 40V must be supplied. On the other hand, when connected in parallel, LED strings can be combined into matrix systems. This is a very good solution when the power supply has one or more, although not enough, outputs. Then we can connect several LED strings to a single DC voltage output to obtain a uniform lighting effect. Pay attention to the maximum output current efficiency to cover the energy demand of all LED strips. The area of underwater forests is larger than we thought. Probably some of us are not aware of it. But we can also find forests under the surface of the oceans. Of course, not in the classic sense of the word. Nevertheless, their total area is also impressive. And just like the familiar forests, these underwater forests provide shelter to many creatures. Hidden under the water are kelp forests that cover vast areas. Many of them are even unnamed. But they are home to a huge number of marine species. Scientists from the University of Western Australia have attempted to estimate the total area they occupy. According to their analysis, the underwater forest covers an area twice the size of India. Of course, trees do not grow in underwater forests, especially seaweed. These forests can be found almost all over the world.
For example, off the coast of Southern Africa is the Great African Sea Forest, and Australia has the Great Barrier Reef. However, there are definitely more of them, and only a few have been given names. The results of the latest research indicate that they cover an area twice as large as India. In some ways, marine forests are similar to terrestrial forests. Seaweeds also need sunlight and carbon dioxide to function, which they need for photosynthesis. Some of them, such as sea bamboos, Eclonia maxima, create a kind of canopy floating in the water because they contain gas-filled elements. While it is relatively easy to determine the area of traditional forests thanks to satellites, they are not useful in the context of marine forests. Therefore, in order to determine the area they occupy, the scientists consulted the scientific studies available on them, and based on the compiled data, they modeled the distribution of these forests. It has been estimated that they cover an area of 6 to 7.2 million square kilometers. That's more than the area of the Amazon. Data on the growth rate of the plants forming these forests were also taken into account. The benefits for man from their existence are diverse. First of all, they remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The question of how much carbon dioxide could be sequestered is currently being researched. In addition, according to some scientists, underwater farms could supplement land-based food production. Unfortunately, nowadays marine forests are also increasingly exposed to the negative effects of human activities. This is primarily due to global warming caused by anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases. Both the excess heat and the gases themselves are also absorbed by the oceans. This is already reflected in the surface of marine forests, and thus in their ability to sequester carbon dioxide. As a consequence, the scale of the problem only increases.